Welcome everybody, I'm Andrea Miller and I'm a registered dietitian and certified diabetes educator here at Community Hospitals and Wellness Centers in Bryan. And I'd like to welcome you all to Live It, Let Them Eat Lentils. So today we are featuring, of course, lentils. And we're gonna use a couple of different kinds of lentils today. Lentils are one of my favorite ingredients to use lately because they're rich in protein and fiber. Um, but they're plant-based. So that means that they have a low carbon footprint. So they're really good for the environment. So if we can substitute using something like lentils or beans, even one night a week, instead of a meat-based meal, um, it can really help the planet. So our first recipe that we're going to do today is a recipe that I have been making since I was in college. And I made it for a couple different reasons when I was in college. First of all, it's nutritious, and I was studying nutrition, so you know that's a win. Um, second of all, it was cheap, and who has money when they're in college? So it's a, a very, very inexpensive recipe. Um, I could make it one night over the weekend when I had some free time, and it would feed me for an entire week. So it makes a ton, so it's perfect for a family. Um, plus, it's delicious. Um, so we're going to be using a brown lentil today, um, a very basic lentil that you can get in almost any grocery store. Very, very cheap. You can buy a bag, a pound bag of um, brown or green lentils for less than two dollars. Um, and we only need about half a bag, about a cup and a quarter. Um, so roughly half a bag for this recipe. So it's very, very, a very, very cheap ingredient. Um, so let's get started cooking. So this is a, I don't know if I said it, it's a Mexican lentil casserole. Um, and I was joking before we started that growing up, I didn't really like lentils that much because my mom, don't tell my mom this, would always make lentil soup. And I, I would say that's how most people are used to eating lentils in a soup. But I wanna show you some different ways that you can eat lentils today. Um, and I love lentils with like a, I'm actually gonna wait on that in a second. I love lentils with a taco seasoning. Um, it really pairs well with lentils. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna get our lentils cooking and the aromatic ingredients to add some flavor. So we have an onion. So I'm just gonna chop my onion up. We're also using a green bell pepper that I'll chop up as well and start sauteing. So the one thing about lentils, and this recipe in particular, um, it does take a little bit of time for lentils to cook. Um, not quite as long as other beans, um, but it does take a good 40 minutes um, to prepare this lentil filling. So luckily I have it, uh, some of it pre-prepared for me. So get that. I'm tossing my onion in there, and it's about a cup, I would say. You don't have to be exact. And then my green bell pepper. You could also use red, yellow, or orange bell pepper if you wanted. If you wanted a little bit of heat, a little bit of extra heat, you could also add jalapeno or any other spicy pepper that you wanted. Just giving them a quick chop. Doesn't have to be perfect. If you are really in a hurry, you could, I know they sell bags of frozen peppers and onions. You could even get a bag of frozen peppers and onions to save you the time of chopping just for some more convenience because I know everybody is always looking for ways to get meals on the table as quickly as possible, but still make meals that are healthy for your family. Sometimes a casserole, it seems like a winter dish, and I know it's spring, but since the topic was lentils, I couldn't resist making my favorite lentil dish, my tried and true lentil dish. I can even get my kids 
My kids love this dish. I've been making it for my kids their entire life, and it's one of their favorites. I'm going to add the peppers in with the onions. And I did put some olive oil in my skillet. Give those a stir. And you just want to cook them until they're starting, the onion is starting to turn translucent and until they're tender. But they're going to cook a little bit more after we add the lentils. All right, so now I'm going to get some garlic cloves. You need two cloves of garlic. I don't quite like that one. I'm going to try a different one. Get some of this paper, papery layer off. This is proving to be a difficult <laughs> clove of gar or clove to get the or bulb to get the clove off of. All right, I have two cloves of garlic off of my bulb. I'm just going to give those a chop and add those right in with my peppers and onions. The garlic's just going to add more flavor and make it smell really good throughout the whole hospital, I'm sure. I'm just going to keep an eye on your onions and peppers so they don't burn. Adjust your heat if you need to. These, uh, these gas griddles are always a little bit finicky. So just give your garlic a quick chop. And then go ahead and add that right on in to the peppers and onions and give them a stir. And now we're going to get the rest of our ingredients ready to throw in there. So the next thing we need to prepare is our lentils. So lentils are a legume. They're in the, the legume family. Um, and as it says on the package, they are a natural agricultural product. So there may be bits and pieces of debris left behind. Have I ever found one? No. <laughs> but religiously, I do this every single time because sure enough, the only time I don't do it, I'm going to find like a rock in my, my cooked dish. So you're supposed to uh, sort and rinse them. And what that means is you just want to, a lot of times what I do is I just get some sort of a flat pan like this and I just kind of shake it around and go through them a little bit. Quickly, you don't have to do anything drastic, but I just kind of make sure that there's no, oh, there's something. What's this? Perfect. Just in time. My first time finding. So this it looks like it's some sort of like, I don't know, grain of rice or something that got stuck in there, but we're just going to take that out. So just kind of sort through them and make sure there's nothing in there that shouldn't be in there. Obviously, like the most concerning thing would be like a little pebble that is the size of a lentil and, you know, got through. All right, so that looks good to me. I'm going to keep an eye on this. And like I said, this heat source is uh, not exactly like what I would use at home, which is understandable, um, since it's a portable little range here. Um, so I'm going to start adding my other ingredients before I get my lentils rinsed, since it's ready. Um, I'm going to add, let will do this one first, tomato sauce. So a 14-ounce can 
of tomato sauce. And if you're looking to control your sodium a little bit more, choose the no salt added tomato sauce. So that goes right in there. And three cups of water. So I'm actually, to get all the tomato sauce out, I'm gonna pour my three cups of water in the can and dump that right in. And then a package of taco seasoning. Again, if you're looking to control your sodium um, or if you have like a bulk you know, taco seasoning container, it's seven teaspoons. And of course, we've made a, uh, a salt-free taco seasoning. I think it was in our very first episode that we ever did with Livet. Um, so you can use that recipe for a salt-free taco seasoning and add that right in. So I'm gonna sprinkle that on in and mix it all together. You can turn up the heat all the way to get it boil, or you don't need it really boiling, but just simmering. Give it a quick stir. And again, the last thing we need to add is our lentils, but we still need to rinse those. So I am going to transfer the lentils that we sorted into a mesh sieve or colander, whatever you have, just so long as the lentils don't squeeze through the opening. And then just take some water. Obviously, you can do this under your sink at home. Um, take some water and just rinse the lentils off. One thing that I like about lentils versus a bean, because they're they have similar nutrients, um, but the lentil is so small it doesn't require a pre-soak. So if you were going to cook black beans or garbanzo beans, something like that from scratch, from a dried bean, you would have to soak it like overnight in water, or you would have to do like a a quick soak where you boil it and then let it set for an hour and then it takes like two hours to cook. So cooking an actual bean can be quite, it's not hard, it's time consuming. But lentils are easier because they don't require that pre-soak and they cook in you know, roughly 20 minutes um, depending on the type of lentil. Each lentil is a little bit different so you know, um, look at the package to see how long it soaks or test for doneness, but generally close to 20 minutes. These are gonna cook on the stove for about 30 to 40 minutes because you want them nice and tender for this casserole. So everything is in the filling. It just has to cook now. So um, it's not hard to throw this together, but it is a little bit time consuming. It's not really active. You know, when I'm making this at home, you know, I throw it on the stove and I do it on a day when, you know, I'm going to be at home where I can, you know, go do other things around the house or hang out with my kids or hang out with my family. And again, this is just simmering away on the stove. So it's not hard to throw together, but yes, it does take a little bit of time. So you don't want to do it like on a busy night where you have, you know, only a half an hour to prepare dinner. Um, but it is good to reheat. It, it is excellent leftover. It gets better with time. One of those recipes kind of like chili that gets better with time. So again, you want to bring this, I'm going to heat all the way up. You want it to kind of, it's starting already. You want it to kind of simmer. You don't generally want to boil lentils. They don't need to be boiled, but you want to bring it to a good simmer. Um, and then you're going to just kind of allow it to simmer until most of the liquid is absorbed and the lentils are tender. And it says partially covered. So a lot of times what I do is I just, I put the cover on, but I just kind of tilt it. A little bit um, and you can stir it every so often to make sure that nothing's sticking to the bottom and that everything's getting cooked evenly. So I'm going to turn it down to turn the heat down a bit to maintain the simmer. I may end up turning it off actually because I actually like I said this takes a bit of time to cook so I had them pre make <laughs> me some lentils so this is what it should look like 
in the end. Um, and we're going to get ready to put our topping, our cornbread topping on top. So I have that ready to go. So when your lentils are almost done, you can start with your cornbread filling. So I'm going to show you a healthier way to make a, a cornbread um, to put on top. Um, but if you're looking for convenience um, or expense, you know, if expense is an issue, go buy a box of Jiffy cornbread mix and use that. <laughs> Just follow the package instructions and um, put that right on top, as I'm going to show you in a second. But in my house, and because you're here, you know, or watching, I'm assuming that you may want to learn some healthier um, tips and tricks um, for some of your favorite recipes. So this cornbread, you could make it on your own, you know, just put it in a pan and bake it, but it's also a great topping for our lentil casserole. Um, and we're gonna do it, uh, we're gonna make a whole grain version. So to make the, the topping, I have one cup of whole wheat flour and a cup of cornmeal, um, preferably, I like to use um, the Bob's Red Mill whole grain cornmeal, if you can find it. A quarter cup of sugar, and a half teaspoon of baking soda. Get all that out. And a tablespoon of baking powder. Those are your dry ingredients. And I just take a whisk and whisk that together. Make sure everything's nice and combined. And then for the wet ingredients, we have a cup of buttermilk, and I'm just going to mix it all in this. Pollen, or the uh, container that I was using for my water. Save dishes. Um, buttermilk, if you don't want to go buy buttermilk for one recipe, which I almost never do, you can make your own at home. All you need is some type of um, acid, like lemon juice or vinegar. You need a tablespoon of the acid, and then um, put it in your measuring cup and fill the rest up to one cup with just regular milk. Let it sit for about five minutes and it will basically be buttermilk to use in your recipe. So that's what I always do at home. We have one egg. Put my glove on so I, can I do it with one hand? I think I just got egg on my shoe. All right, this is not my best egg cracking. All right. Okay. There. And luckily, I have a hand sanitizing wipe, so since my egg <laughs> cracking was a failure with one hand, we'll sanitize afterward <laughs> so we don't cross-contaminate anything with salmonella. I'll get my shoe later. I won't do it now. <laughs> okay. And then we just need a bit of oil. And you can use really any type of oil you'd like. Since this is a savory dish, I don't really mind just using olive oil. Um, if you'd rather not have the flavor of olive oil, you could use canola oil or whatever other liquid oil you have. But there's just so many health benefits to olive oil. Even if it does make it taste a bit different, I don't mind. All right, so I'm going to whisk that all together. And 
pour the wet into the dry. And whisk it together again. Now one thing I tried at home that I was not successful with is making the lentils the day ahead of time and um, using them, you know, so essentially all you'd have to do is make the cornbread and put it on top and bake it. Um, I could have been successful with it, but I wasn't. And the reason why I wasn't successful is because um, I took the lentils straight from the refrigerator um, and put them in the pan and I didn't re-warm them before adding the topping and baking it. And what happened was the cornbread topping, it didn't get baked enough in the center. So you could make the lentils ahead of time, like a day ahead of time, the filling, but you would need to re-warm it before um, putting the, the cornbread topping on top and baking it. I'm getting flour all over. I'm gonna have to switch to a spoon, I think. A whisk is not the best tool for this part. Get off as much as I can. So just mix it until it's combined. And spoon it right on top of your casserole. Again, make sure that it's warm, not cold, otherwise it won't bake properly. So I had them keep this in the warmer for me and so it would bake the way that it should. You will want to grease your pan too, like with just some olive oil or um, cooking spray, whatever you want to do, um, just to keep everything from sticking and just spread it out over the filling. You want to preheat your oven at you know this point too while you're making the filling, preheat it to 400 degrees and then pop it in the oven for only about 20 minutes or until the topping is golden brown and cooked through. And that's it. And it's delicious. Again, this is one of my favorites. I've been making it for way longer than I'd like to admit. <laughs> How long has it been since I graduated college? A long time. <laughs> 10 years. <laughs> so. All right, so let's get started on our next recipe, which is a salad. And I called it a spring lentil salad, but really you can make it any time of year and um, you know just adjust what you're putting in it or don't adjust what you're putting in it, but it, I promise it'll be great any time of year. And so this, again, I had some help. Um, in preparing um, because lentils again do take a bit of time to cook um, but what we're going to do first is we're going to make our dressing and it's really really simple and I make this dressing all the time for all different salads I'll put it on regular lettuce salads I'll um, put it on you know warm salads like a lentil salad something like that um, so I use this um, for a lot of different things and you can kind of customize it a bit too um, you know, depending on what flavors you like. So it's really, really simple. Where'd my measuring cup that I use for the olive oil? It's a quarter cup of oil. And again, I'm using olive oil, especially since I'm not heating this at all. Um, olive oil is a great choice and I love the flavor that it gives. And then you need um, a quarter cup of um, basically another, so an acid. So it's one to one oil to acid. We're using apple cider vinegar today but you could use red wine vinegar, balsamic vinegar, lemon juice. Um, you know, those, are, those would be some other great options to use. And it's gonna change the flavor just a bit. Um, but, you know, again, that kind of gives you some room to kind of customize it based on what you like. So a quarter cup oil and vinegar, and then two teaspoons each of Dijon mustard. I 
And then I'm going to eyeball it because I hate measuring honey. It's so sticky. <laughs> but I'm going to use honey. I'm going to use so two teaspoons of honey, but you could also use maple syrup. I kind of wish I would have used maple syrup today, actually, um, because maple is something that is produced in the spring. Um, But honey, I guess honey is too. Honey and flowers, it's all spring, right? So, um, so just go ahead and whisk that together. So a super simple recipe. Again, I love this just on a basic salad with greens. It's really, really good. And a bit of salt and pepper. Oh, I forgot to add the salt to the cornbread topping. So a bit of salt, and usually I'd add pepper, but I don't have pepper right now. But usually, you know, add a, li a little bit of pepper in there. Again, just make sure it's all nice and whisked together. All right, now we can add our other ingredients. So again, they saved me a step in the kitchen and they roasted my vegetables for me. We are adding um, some roasted carrots and onions. So to do, to make these, all you would do is take an, a red onion I used, but you could use a white, yellow, whatever onion you wanted, um, and cut them into uh, small pieces about the same size as you're going to cut the carrots. And as you can see, the carrots are like so they're kind of like in little sticks, like little carrot sticks, like that. So again, you want all the vegetables about the same size. Um, so cut the carrots into sticks and the onions into similarly sized pieces. I just pile them all up in the center of a baking tray like this. Preheat your oven to 400. Drizzle a little bit of olive oil, salt and pepper on them. You know, toss it all together. Spread it out on the, on the baking sheet. Pop them in the oven um, for oh 20 or so minutes what did i say 10 to 15 10 to 15 minutes however long you want until they're starting to um, kind of turn a little bit brown and um, until they're crisp tender um, so then you can just toss those right on into your dressing i as you can see i made my dressing right in the bowl that i'm going to serve or mix the salad in to save dishes because I know there are some people in this room that hate dishes. <laughs> that, that just really turns them off of a recipe if their kitchen sink is filled with dishes. <laughs> I didn't look at anyone in particular either when I said that. So I'm tossing my roasted vegetables in there. This salad can be served warm or cold. And then we have our lentils. So as you can see, these look a little bit different. I had them cook them for me because obviously they take 20 minutes. So they're cooked and they are cooled. These are black lentils. I wanted to use a different kind of lentil to demonstrate that there are different kinds. So let's look at some of those. So in the... Um, and here we used a brown lentil, um, which again is a very basic lentil. You can find it anywhere. You can use brown lentils in this salad too. I believe that's actually what you tried today in the audience. Um, so you can use brown lentils in the salad because they hold its shape. You want to use a lentil that's going to hold its shape in a salad. But there are other lentils that hold their shape really well too. So this is a green lentil and it looks very similar to the brown lentil. So those are, sometimes they're used interchangeably too. You'll either green or brown, um, doesn't matter. I use those interchangeably, they're both cheap. Another greenish lentil that's different, this one is harder to find. I had to buy them on Amazon. This is a French lentil. And um, after I'm done, anybody in the audience that wants to come up and take a closer peek can do that. But the French lentil is smaller than the green lentil and um, it kind of is a little bit more speckled. Ooh, I found a rock in that one. There is debris in there. Look at that, I found a pebble. So we'll discard that. 
So that would work really well in a salad because these hold their shape very well. Um, this is the black lentil, um, or it's also called a beluga lentil. Um, and, or sometimes people call it a caviar lentil because it kind of looks like caviar <laughs> a little bit when it's cooked, but it's not. It's a lentil. <laughs> no raw fish eggs here. <laughs> so it is, um, I love this one. One of the reasons I love the black lentil is because it's super high in iron. A serving of black lentils has about 15% of your daily value of iron in it. So actually all lentils are a good source of iron, but the black is the highest. So anything that is this rich in color is also very rich in nutrients. So any of those lentils would work well in a salad. The one that will not work well in a salad is this one. This is the red lentil. I love red lentils. Um, but not for a salad because they, first of all, these cook very quickly. They cook in like 10 to 15 minutes. Um, I would, would prefer to eat these in like a soup. Um, I also have another recipe. Oh, like uh, oh, some other examples that they'd be using is like a dal, like an Indian, um, an Indian dish called dal. Um, you might find a red lentil, but they're going to be more mushy, um, almost like, almost the texture of a mashed potato. If, you didn't, if they didn't have enough liquid, if you just kind of cooked them and mashed them, they'd be very similar to a mashed potato almost. Not in flavor, but in texture. Um, so I, my favorite way that I've cooked red lentils lately is um, I make a vegan chili um, with red lentils and bulgur in it. Um, and it's really delicious. Maybe we'll do that later, but chili is just not a spring thing to make. So, um, but yeah, so don't use the red lentils. Black, brown, um, or green lentils for a salad. We'll add those in right here. And you can see just how nicely they hold their shape. Um, this would be, with the black lentils, this would be a great dish to serve around Halloween because <laughs> it's red, and, or sorry, um, orange and black. I think I probably have served something like this around Halloween and my kids think I'm crazy, but. So then just toss everything round. I'd give it some kind of funny name like, I don't know, witch salad or <laughs> something like that. So it looks so pretty. And then for the finishing touch, because it is a spring lentil salad and herbs are a spring thing, I'm actually I wish I had some scissors, but I don't. Put on some more gloves here since this is a fresh thing. I actually picked this from my garden this morning. Again, my children thought I was crazy. I was running out the door and on my way out, I stopped at the garden and snipped some, <laughs> some dill. This is fresh dill. And you might hear it called dill weed because it literally grows like a weed in my garden, but it is a companion crop. So I had like zero bugs last year and I am going to credit my dill <laughs> because I let it go crazy. Um, and I love, it actually attracts, um, I'm gonna flip this over. It attracts uh, swallowtail butterflies. So that's a fun thing to do if you grow dill, um, collect the caterpillars and watch them turn into butterflies. But it has a really fresh taste. I love dill. It smells so good too. Other options, if you don't want to use dill, parsley would work really well um, in this, or if you want to get crazy, like mint would be good too. And I just add that. I have about a quarter of a cup in here. You don't have to add the herbs at all if you don't want. If that's not your thing, if you don't have a garden, herbs can be expensive if you buy them in the store. Again, I have them in my garden, so it's cheap for me to add herbs, but you certainly don't have to but I do like the combination of dill and carrots. So just give that a quick stir. I 
and it's good to go. So this would be great. So actually, both of these are, wait a second. This one is vegetarian, the, the casserole, the lentil casserole, casserole is vegetarian, but it's not vegan because it has some um, egg and some dairy in the topping. I'm sure there are ways that you could make it vegan um, if you wanted to, and if you're interested in that, you can reach out to me. Um, this would be a vegan dish, so no meat in the salad. Um, I like to serve it on a bed of greens, so like some spring greens like arugula or just some really nice tender greens. Um, serve it on a bed of greens um, and make a great like mealtime salad. Or you could also just serve it um, as a side dish. And again, it'd be great warm or cold. Um, so lots of different options here. Um, customizable in terms of the herbs, customizable in terms of the you know, vinegars and oils and so forth. So I hope that everybody watching finds some time to make these recipes and everybody at home does as well. Thank you for joining me today. Does anybody have any questions? So my husband doesn't eat it. Mm-hmm. If you added meat to that, like maybe a half a pound or something. To the casserole? Yeah. Hmm. I don't know. Um, I would serve it as a side dish for meat. Have meat on the side. That's what I would do. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't mess with it adding any meat. <laughs> I get uh, probably some type of ground meat um, would be the best, but again, I, I think it's perfect just as it is. So I would just call it a side dish and have, you know, serve it with whatever meat you like. Any other questions? Well, thanks so much for joining me, everybody. It was great to be back live today. So um, we'll see you for our next Live It, to be determined the, the theme. <laughs>